Hi everyone, this is kind of an unintentional video. We're actually out here filming for something else, but I came across this clump of plants down here on the side of the track and it was a really good example to sh demonstrate something that comes up on our foraging courses, particularly in early spring. But it's nice to have a really good example to talk about. So it is mid-February here in North Wales and the wild garlic is really starting to show itself, particularly this week. And in fact, today in this woodland that we manage, we've met a couple of people who are out already collecting wild garlic. So we chatted to them for a bit. It's, there's a potential hazard with foraging for wild garlic in the early spring. And that's because of this plant down here. So camera, come with me. <laughs> you're there, you're balanced. This is a clump of green plants that all look very, very similar. And we'll cut to a bit of footage we shot earlier now. So you can see some of the similarity here. There's at least two different species of plant here and only one of them is edible. The other one is actually mildly toxic. So this one is edible. This is wild garlic, really young small wild garlic leaf like that. Edible, you can use it in salads, you can use it in all sorts of things. Everyone knows about wild garlic. If you've got even the vaguest interest in foraging, I don't need to talk to you about it. But growing right next to it is that, which looks pretty similar. This one is called Arum maculatum. This is Allium ursinum, wild garlic. This is Arum maculatum also known as Lords and Ladies, Cuckoo Pint, lots of other common names. So this plant has two lobes at the bottom of the leaf. These become really exaggerated and elongated as the leaf matures later in, later in the season in about three or four weeks time. But for now, they grow in the same conditions. I mean, there's dozens of examples all the way up and down this track here. They grow in the same conditions at the same time of year and look very, very similar. But if you're overconfident with your foraging and you're going through grazing by hand and just pulling up clumps of wild garlic leaves because you absolutely love wild garlic and you know how to use it and it's easy and you're, you feel safe with it, there's a chance you're gonna gather a handful of this one instead. So this one will cause irritation to the hands and I'm gonna wash my hands after touching this but more so to the lips, to the mouth, to the throat, to the digestive tract, and anywhere else sensitive that it touches. So you really don't want that in your salad. So the way to avoid that is, well, first of all, just keep an eye out when you're foraging and don't go mad and gather dozens of handfuls at a time and throw them into a basket. But also, if you've been out foraging or you've been out foraging with a family or something like that, then make sure that you actually just check and lay everything out on the table or, or a cutting board or something and make sure all the leaves look as we expect them to. And just, if there's anything you're not sure about, just throw it out. It's really not worth the risk, particularly if you've got kids or you've got someone vulnerable in the household. So you've got that one to not be worried about, but to be aware of. So that's wild garlic, that's Lords and Ladies Cuckoo Pint Arum Maculatum. They look very, very similar at this time, but as they mature, the wild garlic leaves just become a bigger, pointier version of that. Whereas the Arum leaves, the toxic one, ends up with bigger lobes that come down here and it comes to a big point like that and it has black spots on it so they become easier to tell apart later on in the year and that's another way you can stay safer is just wait a few weeks the wild garlic's not going anywhere and then this will become more obvious and while we're here you should also point out that anywhere you get wild garlic you're likely to get bluebells and bluebells are a protected species in the uk you cannot pick them you cannot uproot them, even if it's on your own land, you cannot pick them. So be aware of disturbing bluebells, a protected species when you're foraging for wild garlic. Right, that's it. Thank you for watching. I'll see you again next time.